Interval fasting may be helpful in relieving the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. Interval fasting, or limiting the time when you can eat meals, may inhibit Alzheimer's disease. According to a new study conducted on rodents, using a time-limited feeding schedule resulted in improved memory and reduced accumulation of amyloid proteins in the brain. Alzheimer's disease affects older people, most often after the age of 65. However, it starts much earlier. We're still not sure how. But abnormal amounts of amyloid beta and tau seem to play a big role in the development of the disease. Importantly, these proteins begin to concentrate in the brain decades before the onset of symptoms such as memory loss. Scientists now believe the disease emerges from both genetic and environmental factors. Although the exact processes that cause it remain a mystery, despite the lack of clarity as to the causes of the disease, it is clear that the aging process leads to changes that drive its development. More and more people are suffering from Alzheimer's disease, and this is associated with increasing life expectancy. Unfortunately, this disease has now become the fifth leading cause of death worldwide. Recent studies on mice provide new hope for patients. They show that the disease can be slowed down by using interval fasting. In a study published in the journal Cell Metabolism, mice fed on a time-limited schedule showed improved memory and reduced accumulation of amyloid proteins in the brain. The authors say the findings are likely to lead to a human clinical trial. Alzheimer's disease remains one of the most dangerous neurodegenerative diseases. In the United States alone, it affects an average of 1 in 9 people over the age of 65. Unfortunately, we can expect this percentage to be even higher in the future. The more so that so far it has not been possible to develop effective methods of treatment. Therefore, even seemingly unusual directions of research in this area should not come as a surprise. Every progress here is of importance for a longer human life and its better quality. The study, conducted by scientists from two California universities, located in San Diego and Los Angeles, used rodents with a mouse model of Alzheimer's disease. It is known that this disease is able to significantly change the circadian rhythm of a person suffering from it. Sleep patterns are disrupted. Significant problems with both falling asleep and staying asleep may also occur. Incidentally, current therapies do not provide any methods of dealing with this very problem. However, during the research, it was decided to address this issue from the other side. The focus was primarily on the reconfiguration of the circadian rhythm of mice, which in turn was aimed at influencing the course of the disease itself. The aim of the scientists was to investigate whether and to what extent limiting the availability of food would affect the condition of memory in mice. In the case of some of them, the feeding time was limited in time. They were only allowed to feed for six hours each day, if we wanted to translate this proportionally into human conditions. We would get a fast lasting as much as 14 hours in a 24-hour day. And as it turns out, such an approach is able to regulate the circadian rhythm disturbed by Alzheimer's disease. Well, in mice that fasted for most of the day, it was found that their memory began to work better. And the good news doesn't end there. It was also found that amyloid proteins, which are associated with Alzheimer's disease, accumulated to a lesser extent in their brains. It was also observed that mice in which intermittent fasting was used slept much more peacefully. Their sleep rhythm became more stable, and they were much less hyperactive at night. They also did not wake up as often as those who were allowed to feed indefinitely. In fact, changes have even been noticed at the molecular level.
The expression of many genes that are associated either with the disease itself or with inflammation in the brain has changed. The approach described above has therefore brought measurable results, which gives quite high hopes, because in the case of humans such changes can be introduced extremely quickly and easily. However, it will be necessary to obtain confirmation in the form of the results of studies conducted on humans. A popular weed could be the key to the development of drought-tolerant crops. Higher temperatures, more severe droughts and other effects of climate change are increasingly threatening crop yields. Genetic engineering techniques such as CRISPR-Cas9 can give crops traits that help them withstand the effects of climate change. However, there is a plant that can survive heat and drought. Understanding how purslane can thrive in hot, dry conditions could help scientists design more resilient crops. Climate change is progressing, droughts are becoming more frequent. It is becoming increasingly important to breed varieties of crops and cereals that are as resistant as possible to these new, extreme weather conditions. In particular, one of the plants currently existing on Earth can provide us with important clues in this regard. It is purslane, a plant widely distributed around the world and usually treated as a weed. It may hold important tips on how to create drought-tolerant plants in a world beset by climate change. The description and results of the research by scientists from Yale University were published in the journal, Science Advances. In the course of evolution, plants have developed various ways to improve photosynthesis, which in this more effective version allows them to survive in harsh conditions. One of these possibilities is the so-called C4 photosynthesis. It is mainly used by plants such as corn or sugarcane. This type of photosynthesis gives these plants the ability to produce essential nutrients even at high temperatures. On the other extreme, there are cacti and agaves. They, in turn, thanks to CAM photosynthesis, are able to survive in deserts and other areas where water availability is scarce. Both C4 and CAM perform slightly different functions and are, in a way, an addition to, ordinary, photosynthesis. Of particular interest is the fact that there is a plant that has both of these abilities, which is quite rare. It can be said that this makes her a superplant in this respect. In terms of photosynthesis, this makes it both extremely efficient and drought tolerant at the same time. Most scientists have so far believed that in the leaves of this plant, the processes of C4 and CAM photosynthesis can occur independently of each other. Studying exactly how they occur could be of paramount importance for genetic engineering, as it could help point the right course of action. Yale scientists Jose Marino Villena and Hauran Zhou undertook a thorough study of purslane leaves, Portulaca oleracea. The results of their research turned out to be surprising, and at the same time contradictory to what most scientists believed until now. It turned out that the processes of C4 and CAM photosynthesis in purslane leaves are interconnected, which in practice provides this plant with an even higher level of protection against adverse conditions. These processes take place in the same cells, with the products of the CAM reaction then being processed as part of the C4 metabolic pathway. The conclusion is simple. C4 and CAM are much more compatible with each other than previously thought. Scientists suspect that there may be more plant species in which both mechanisms function in a similar way to purslane. You just have to discover them. For now, however, the world of science reserves that there is still a long way to go from these discoveries, e.g. to the engineering addition of CAM processes to plants in which C4 processes take place, such as corn.